Hello, I'm Bill and this is Matt with Axis New England. We're excited to show you Parker's new automation controller featuring EtherCAT field bus technology. We have the pack controller here hooked up to a drive and a motor and we're going to show you how to integrate it with an EtherCAT I.O. block from WAGO. We have a button hooked into the EtherCAT just for example and Matt's going to show you how to get it all set up. Hi everyone, uh, we're going to get started by opening Parker Automation Manager. The first thing we're going to do is go to the new file and we're going to select a standard project. Um, we'll rename it to pack to wago io. We'll hit OK and this is going to bring up a short menu. So we need to pick first what device we have. Uh, currently we're using the pack 320C so we'll start that and then you can choose what language you want to start your first program in. We're going to keep it with structured text for now. So let the project build. So the first thing that we're going to do is double click on device. And this is going to open up a separate menu. So the first thing you'll notice is that it loads with the pack's default IP address in. So all we need to do here is hit enter and we'll connect up to the pack. From there we can go to EtherCAT Master. We can right click and select scan for devices. So this should automatically find all EtherCAT devices on the field bus. Uh, we see right here this device is not in our repository, so that's actually our WAGO EtherCAT coupler. Uh, in order to get that into our device repository, we actually go to Tools, down to Device Repository, and then we're going to go to System Repository, Field Buses, EtherCAT, Slave, and then we're going to click Install. Uh, for me, I downloaded the WAGO EDS file from their website, so all I need to do is double click that and it will automatically install the EtherCAT bus coupler and all of the drivers for the I.O. modules themselves. So now that that's completed successfully, we can close that, click EtherCAT Master again, right click, go to Scan for Devices, and now we see that we've found our WAGO, Eth Wago EtherCAT I.O. coupler. So now all we need to do is unselect that, click Copy All Devices to Project, and it's going to add our drive and our I.O. to our project tree. Next we need to double click the I.O. itself. Uh, we need to click enable expert settings. We'll need to enable the distributed clock and we're going to have to enable sync zero as well. Uh, underneath the EtherCAT I.O. mapping we can see that we've got all of our modules here including our outputs and our digital inputs. So now, in order to take advantage of these, we need to add a global variable list to the project. So the next thing we need to do is click Application, right click, go to Add Object, Global Variable List, and then we can create our own list. So from here, we can quickly add a few variables. So I'm going to add LED1 as a bool type variable, and we're going to add Switch1 as another bool type variable. Now that we've created our global variables, we can go back to the I.O. coupler and we can go select our first channel of output and then we need to select the application, the global variable list, and then we can select our LED output. Double click that and now we can go down to our first input channel here. Double click that, application, GVL, switch one. So now we've assigned our two variables, two I.O. ports there. So I've loaded a completed project just to save time for everybody. Uh, you can see here that the switch is, is an input here and our LED is an output there. So if I press the button on it, we can see this LED flash on and off and we can see the switch come on. In addition to that, we have another program running in the background that's driving the servo motor as well. All right, I'll send that back to Bill. Thanks for checking out our video. I hope you learned a little bit about how easy it is to hook up external devices to the PAC controller. Tune in soon for more helpful videos.